Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0, and today is day four. So yesterday I taught you how to manually add a single contact into KW Command. Today I'm going to teach you how to supercharge that process by bulk adding contacts into KW Command using a CSV file and the import wizard that we have in the contacts applet. So the first thing that we need is that CSV file, basically an Excel style spreadsheet with columns of data representing contacts you want to have brought into your command database. I'm blessed to have an amazing friend and colleague, Brooke Silva, who is the regional technology trainer for the New England region. She shared with me this amazing CSV file that she's created of completely fictional characters with fictional emails, fictional addresses, fictional birthdays, etc. So you can see all of that information here on the screen. Uh, this might be a roster that you have pulled over from your previous CRM that you once used. Maybe it's a roster of contacts that you have from people that live in your neighborhood or uh, friends from work or church or uh, parents on the baseball team or the ballet group or whatever it may be. Essentially, any sort of list of people where you have names, emails, addresses, phone numbers, etc. So we're going to go ahead and go through the process of bulk importing all of these 11 contacts at once. And you can do up to several hundred, even up to, I believe, 2,000 contacts at one time using this process. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to go back into command. We're going to go into the contacts applet. And in the top right hand corner, you'll remember that manual add button, the add contact button. But just to the left, we've got the import button. So we're going to select that import button. And in previous challenges, I taught you how to use the command CSV template. Well, in this case, we no longer are required to use that specific template. We can actually use any CSV file as long as we map the data. And that's what we're going to go through today. So let's go find that file real quick. I'm going to find that here on my hard drive and bring it into command. There you can see it's been uploaded. You can see import rules. Contacts must have unique phone numbers and email addresses. Duplicates will not work. First name is the minimum info needed. If your address has leading zeros for the zip code, right? This is important. Make sure you format that column such that the zeros are not hidden. We're going to click on continue. And here you're going to see 15 unmatched columns. Well, those columns are these columns that you can see here on the screen. So we need to go through the process of actually mapping each one of them from our Excel or CSV file to command. So we've got the first name column. I can actually click on the drop down and start typing in and you'll see that we then get a shorter list, right? This is the full list of everything that could potentially be mapped. Scrolling through that I have found takes a lot more time than actually just starting to type in where you want things mapped. So we've got first name, we've got last name, we've got email, primary email is probably what I'm going to use here. And you can see accidentally I copied a second column. If I don't want to map one of the columns, I can just use the skip button. So that column is not going to be mapped because it matches the column we already have here. So if you do have some columns in your spreadsheet that you don't want mapped, you can just skip them. Next, we've got address. So we're gonna do address line one. We're going to go in and find a primary address, address line one. We'll choose that. Then we've got line two. So we're going to look for primary address line two. You can see we've got that. Then we just keep going through this process, right? So primary address city gets mapped. State primary address gets mapped. Zip code gets matched. Then we've got notes. So we're going to type in notes. That's actually a column that can be mapped as well. We've got a tag, right? So we created a tag column on this spreadsheet such that we could easily import those. So you can see tag and tag two. So we're gonna come in and we're going to choose tag and map it there. We can actually do tag two and map it to that same column as well. Finally, we've got source. So we're gonna put in the source. You can see lead source is a mappable field in command. Birthday. And you may not have all of this information in the CSV file that you're mapping, but just go ahead and map what you have. Finally, we've got a link column. 
Now that could be mapped to several different things depending on what the link is. So if it's a social profile, we could put it in there, right? If it's websites, we could put it in social profile website. There's a lot of different places that we could drop this into. I'm just gonna do the social profile website one. We're gonna put that there. Um, and But if you had everybody's Facebook profile, then obviously it'd be social profile Facebook. If you had everyone's LinkedIn, you get the drift, right? So now that we have each one of these columns mapped from our CSV file into the command field, we can click on continue. It's actually going to give us an example of what it would look like using the first contact in the list, right? So here's our CSV file. Here's our first contact. It's actually going to show us what it looks like in command. So here would be Freda's name, right? We don't have a phone number in this column, so we're not mapping phone numbers. We should we didn't want to create 11 phone numbers, bottom line. So here's uh, the emails, here's the tags, the lead sources, the address, here's that website, the birth date. And you can go through each one of these and kind of take a look and make sure, hey, is everything coming over correct? As long as it does, we would click on finalize import and you'll see, hey, your contacts are being imported depending on the size of the file, it might take a second. You're gonna receive a notification once the process is complete. We're gonna click on return to contacts and you can see here at the top, hey, we're working on it. It actually says we are importing these contacts from the list that you provided us. Command might be slow depending on how long it takes. You can refresh the page to see any contacts that have been imported and you're gonna get a notification when it's all done. So let's do a quick refresh. And you will see inside of the contacts, because that was not a massive list, we've already got all our contacts in. And if we click on our notification bell at the top right, you can say, you can see you have partially failed imports. Uh-oh, well, let's see what failed. So I'm gonna tap to download the CSV file. I'm gonna get this file down here at the bottom of the screen. And so let's click on that. And then we are going to get a document that says, hey, these two contacts failed. And if we scroll way over to the right hand side, we should get a reasoning why they actually failed. So we're gonna keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. And here we go, right? So it says social media error. Hey, the social media link is not valid. So let's go back and check it out. And it looks like those two social media template, those two social media links, command didn't like. Right, so something was wrong with these two links. Now I could always go back in and correct these two and then re-import just those two contacts. You're gonna get a failed list if for any reason, um, so obviously here's an example of a website not put in correctly. If the phone number already exists inside of command, the import for that specific contact would fail. If the email already exists inside of command, that specific contact would fail as well. So there's a couple of different reasons why you may have some contacts fail, but you can always see why inside of this download, right? So we scrolled all the way to the right. That's where you'll see the reason why those specific contacts did not come in. But in this case, we do have now nine of those 11 contacts. They're in, they're ready to go. If we click on the first one, right? You can see, hey, we've got the name, we've got the tags, we've got the email came over, the lead source came in. Because we had an actual address, even the neighborhood got assigned. If we scroll down, we've got the social profile, we've got the birth date, and then look over here on the right hand side. Because we imported notes, we've got the note created, and inside the note column, we've got that note created as well. So that's essentially how you can bulk import contacts into KW Command using the import wizard and a CSV file. Stay tuned for tomorrow. I'm going to show you live an app that you can use from your iPhone or Android to create a CSV file of the contacts in your phone that you can actually then go through this same process of downloading those contacts in bulk as well. Great talking to you guys as always. I look forward to seeing you again real soon.